Welcome to Mario Base. ME Engine Part 3 Angle Encoder Session 2. In my previous video, the basic operation of the angle encoder as explained. In this video, I'll show you what is the actual arrangement of MAN BMW ME engines angle encoders, the use of marker sensors, and what is their actual arrangement. In previous video, I have explained you a about the angle encoders where the engine has power on and when it's operational, how to measure the angle. Let's say if someone switched off the power to the engine control system and meantime, someone rotates the crankshaft, then the engine control system does not have any clue about its crankshaft position because there is no reference signal from the TBC while the engine was turning. To overcome this issue, Especially for next power up and starting sequence, we need an accuracy of angle up to 22.5 degree to admit the starting air. So to get the engine position to accuracy to a 22.5, then we need to have absolute encoder system. Let's say we are using the same trigger ring which has a semicircle ring and there are two sensors, marker sensors placed. One is at zero degree, same as our previous discussion, and the other one is placed 90 degree after the first sensor. Let's say as the engine rotates from zero to 90, only MMA a sensor will get high, and from 90 to 179, both the sensor will get high because the semicircle ring will cover these two sensors. And from 180 to 269, only MSA sensor will go high, whilst 270 to 359, both the sensors will be producing low signal. So if you get this kind of signal, you can get an idea. The engine control system can get an idea where does the engine is uh, positioned at for that particular moment. Let's say now we get this kind of signal, 1, 0 from MMA and MSA 0, which means the engine will remain between 0 and 90. If that signal received by ECS, it considered that the engine is at exactly 45 degrees. So which means the maximum error or deviation uh, can have is will limit to 45 degrees. Let's say the actual, the position is 1 degree, but the engine is taking it as 45 degree, the error, the error will be 44 degree. So this is how that engine accuracy or the engine position can be measured up to accuracy of 45 degree. But for admitting starting air, this is not sufficient. We have to have at least 22.5 degree accuracy for starting the engine. By using another couple of sensors, which is placed 45 degree shifted from the first sensor, then you can get a signal pattern as this table. If the engine lies between 0 to 45, you will get 1000. 0, 0. If between 45 to 81, 1100, and so on. So at any time, if the engine control system receives such signal, let's say between 0 to 44, it will get 1000 binary signal, which means engine remains at this position. So the engine control system takes it as the engine is at 22.5 degree, regardless that it is actual position is 1 degree or 44 degree. Between this, it will take it as 22.5 degree. So the maximum error will be 22.5. In other words, you can get the engine position to an accuracy of 22.5 degree, and which is much more enough to execute your starting and admission sequence. So there will be four marker sensors and four quadrature sensors, and these are divided into two separate sensors. So the quadratures are responsible to act as an incremental counter while the engine is powered up, 
and the operational, so it will give you the exact position to accuracy of one degree. Using the marker sensors, two sensor consist of four, each sensor consists of two, a part for no, a base that a part of 90 degree, while the other two also are the same. And these two sets are shifted 45 degree, and these are used to measure the absolute angle when there is no power and on next power up attempt. The system that we have explained is actually configured in this way. The angle encoder A, it consists of four sensors, two marker sensors, and two quadrature. The same way, encoder B consists of two marker sensors and two quadratures. And these two sensors are mounted on the crankshaft so that the encoder B is 45 degree shifted from the position of angle encoder A. So there will be the total sensor arrangement which has this 45 degree shifting uh, sequence. And if you see all these two sensors separately given their position to all the ECUs and all CCUs. Encoder B, all the sensors, both markers and quadratures, are given to PSA B and then to the all ECUs and CCUs. While in angle encoder A, only master marker sensor and quadrature sensor, only three signals taken from the encoder. MSA sensor, this one is not used in the encoder, but it is mounted at the fly wheel to get as a reference, and then it is separately fed to PSA A and then used in ECUs and CCUs. The reason for that is let's say if your crankshaft position is shifted from the angle encoder's coupling due to vibration or some other problem. Then both the encoders still will follow the same angle, but it is differ from the actual crank tank. So you need to have some reference. So that's why the encoder A system only emits a sensor placed on the flyway. So which takes as a reference to the actual flywheel position and the encoder's coupling then there will be no error. If there is an error that will give you in your alarm and monitoring system as an encoder misaligned. If you consider angle encoder A or B, the signal output will be like that. Master pencil will activate 180 uh, throughout the 180 degree period, while the, the slave one, by shifting 90 degrees, then it will get high. Same way, the quadrature one and two will get uh, produce this kind of pulse signal, 360 per cycle, and each shifted from 90 degree away from the other one, depending on the clockwise or anticlockwise, or ahead, or else as turn move on. So this is how it received by your engine control system. This is how in the engine free end that you are. Uh, encoders are mounted, so externally, we physically you can see in this arrangement. This is TSA A and TSA B. This is how these junction box are connected to your angle encoder. If you get a closer look without the cover, you can see two coupling billows, and these are the tiny encoders one and two, encoder A and encoder B. This is how it mounted and the engine free end. And MSA sensor, the reference sensor, which is located on the flywheel, that is how that semicircle ring mounted on the flywheel. And this sensor alone giving uh, 90 degrees shifted from the TDC position and act as a reference signal. As an alternative method, the MAN ME engines, they are provided all this previous encoder arrangement physically available at the flywheel. So all eight sensors are mounted on the flywheel with the 360 teeth ring as well as semicircle ring. You can see the semicircle ring, 360 teeth ring, 
and the 5e. So this arrangement also available the NASA automatically to the small, tiny angle in quarters. When you go to a multi-panel maintenance system input-output that you can see in quarter B and in quarter signals, so you can act, you can monitor how does that quadrature sensors and master sensors are providing their output signals, which can be used for diagnosing the problems. I hope that you understand the basic operation of these uh, angle encoder systems, marker sensors, quadrature sensors, and the requirement to have 22.5 degree accuracy, and how does that engine achieve that requirement. Being in touch, let's meet on the next video. Thank you.